Thank you. All right, good evening. This is the uh, Town of Brookfield Selectman's meeting for February 1st, uh, 2022. Please rise to say the pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right. Um, so we're going to go straight into the agenda for tonight. The first item on the agenda is the ARPA funds um, discussion and vote. So I uh, want to open up that fundamentally, just to give everybody a real high level, initially ARPA funding, which is the money associated with uh, helping with economic uh, items, capital planning items that were put on hold because of COVID. Uh, initially, when the rules came out, we were only gonna be able to use that funding for water projects in this town because it couldn't actually be used for road work. In the final version of the ARPA funding rules, the final rules that have come out, we can actually use that funding uh, for uh, road work and um, they and we also somewhat coincidentally had applied for grant funding in order to do the work on central street we had two separate grants uh, one of them to handle the portion up on the highway side by route nine the other one for the balance of uh, central street uh, we got the we had gotten the grant funding that we asked for but as everybody knows kind of a byproduct of how the economy is right now. Everything is significantly more expensive than anything that was quoted two years ago. Uh, so that project was gonna be coming in um, relatively high to the original grant funding. It would have been close to a, what, a $500,000 difference, I think. Uh, okay, yep, roughly, roughly $500,000 of grants. Um, and uh, our total ARPA money uh, for the town now is going to be about a million dollars and we had already earmarked nearly half of that I believe for the water main project associated with it. Yeah, we, we never uh, we never really earmarked a number. Uh, the number has just continually you know increased uh, without notice that I know of um, along with like you said these, these new guidelines that open it up to road work right. uh, they're real recently yeah, it, yeah, so this is something that happened within the last two weeks. So within the last two weeks, a lot of things have occurred. One of them being that we had finally got the quotes back, identified that we didn't have enough funding in the grants to do the road work, but literally at the same time, uh, um, our grant coordinator, uh, Kathy LaRocca, had identified that these rules were changing. She was staying on top of it and communicated it to, to you all, I believe, in order to ensure that we took the, the best advantage of it that we could. So. Um, let's see. So, in a nutshell, do I need to read this from? No, that's just information. Cover most of it? You covered okay. you covered most of it. So, what we need from the board is a formal vote to designate the ARPA funds for the water uh, water main project and for the Central Street project. Project and, and, and right, and just so we're clear, we're not we're not changing the scope of the project. Uh, it's, it's strictly um, to allow this art of funding to be you know, used not only for the water work but also for the road work. A huge, huge bonus, you know, bonus and benefit. It's great. Right. Yeah, this is great. Yeah. So what this what this vote in essence does is that we can't we can't just allocate it without a formal vote of the executive. Uh, the executive branch, in essence, of the town, which would be the Board of Selectmen. So, um, Adam, do you have a motion relative to this? Uh, I, yep, I would like to make a, a motion um, to that effect of allocation of the funds for the for the ARPA funding. Please, that is correct. Uh, I'll second it. Do we need any express express language in it? No, we do not. Okay, great. Uh, so that's so the motion is made and seconded. All in favor? Uh, Adam, I. Off and I. So um, I didn't really open it up to discussion. I don't think there's a, a lot required with regard no, to that because, um, uh, and we're kind of trying on a on a time schedule tonight. So, yeah. um, so the second was that uh, we're delivering back a union grievance 
decision. So thank you very much for coming in, gentlemen. Oh yeah, thank you. I'm sorry. Sorry that we didn't um, we didn't actually ask you you all for input on it. I, you know, what, I, the one thing I do want to say relative to that vote. If there was questions. We we have an answer. Yeah. yeah. Fair enough. So well, I appreciate it, and one of the reasons why I was able to rattle that off is that. Um, uh, Dennis and uh, Ryan had done a great job of explaining it to me at the department head meeting a couple of days back on Thursday. So it, it allowed me to give everybody kind of the Cliff's Notes version of it. But these gentlemen have worked amazingly well together in order to get this coordinated. And so that we're going to get a huge project done without it having a, a, a impact on our directly on our tax base. It's on monies that were due back to us from other, other um, governmental agencies. So appreciate the fact that we're going to be able to leverage all of that money effectively to support those projects. Thank so. you. Thank you. Um, do we okay. need, and yeah, if you guys want to take off, because I, I know both of yeah, you. Yep. Uh, thank you very much. Nice yeah. yeah, gentlemen, thank, thank you. you so much. Thank you so much for coming in. All right, so the union grievance. Okay. So we're going to move on to the union grievance. Um, I'm sorry? It was originally number two. I'm just trying to get some of the folks out of here because the ice rink is probably going to be a much longer discussion, if that's okay. Okay. Do we have oh, actually, we yeah, don't so have everybody's here for the ice rink. So. Yep, and we don't have the police, so they can wait. That can wait? Yeah. So let's skip to the ice rink. <laughs> What's that? <laughs> that was. <laughs> so I'm going to be turning the laptop back and forth because. Um, Mr. Jollyfer, who is the selectman, can't hear unless the microphone is facing him. So as you speak, it would I'd appreciate it if you would speak up. It's very hard with the masks because they kind of muffle everything. That way he can hear us. Yeah. And when he speaks, I'm going to spin him around so you can hear him. So. Uh, and, and actually, if you're speaking, if you don't mind coming up to the table so that the mic can pick you up for the group, that would, that be, would be, that'd be, be even better. Yeah. They can state their name too. Yeah, and state your name. So, it, does who would like to speak? Who's, well, who's here from the rec committee, first yeah. of all? And who's here from cultural council? Cultural council. council. Wait, a minute, didn't you just raise your hand twice? No, I was. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> I'm like, I'm, wow, you are very versatile. <laughs> all right. So, cultural council is here, and the rec committee is is here. Okay. Now, okay. do you all have a quorum? I think we posted did we point we did we posted meeting? it as a joint meeting between so, the three boards so if you have a quorum you can speak freely yep. and you don't need a quorum to participate so you just exactly so um, so would who would like to start well why don't was the rec committee the one who wants to have the ice skating rink so why don't we have them come up and explain what they're trying to do you want to sit there here yeah. Well, Jeff Landine, chairman of, well, co-chairman of REC with Lisa Hanrahan. Okay. Um, so the reason we're here is just to have a discussion about potentially putting a ice skating rink back onto the common. A little history is three years ago, we got a grant from the community club um, to purchase a, uh, an ice rink like ones you see in other towns. Um, in year one, we waited about a weekend too long, <laughs> and um, with the weekend we had slated to put the rink in, it snowed about a foot and some odd. So <clears throat> we went up there with snow blowers and shovels, and as we were laying it out, we moved, I think it was two, was it two or three of the benches? Okay, it was the front row, so it was at least two, possibly, at least two, at least two of the benches that are, that front the, um, um, not pavilion, the, the gazebo, uh, the gazebo. Yeah, that front the gazebo, so yeah. if everybody can picture that where those are. Yeah, so there's a gazebo, just so everyone can picture yeah. it, there's gazebo, there's like a brick, um, almost like pat, flat like patio, a patio. Yep. and then a little bit of like a pathway, and then, and then you've got your benches. Right, correct. So. Um, so I wasn't, I wasn't there when that, when that was happening, but my, the, they sorted out the folks that were there sorted out that they weren't cemented into the ground and they thought they could be moved. 
and we found out later that there was some damage caused to uh, a couple of the benches. Um, so we had a season of the of the ice rink there. Uh, we found out much later that there was some uh, possibly some damage to the actual gazebo floor from folks walking on them with ice skates. Mm -hmm. Okay, so um, I did try to validate that. Um, I didn't see it, but I have faith that that was prop could have happened. Um, so then we had a year where we didn't put the rink up. And this year we went back and requested to use of the common again. Um, and a vote was made to not have it there due to the issues that I just brought up. Yep. The benches and the, uh, and the gazebo damage. So we did look at, um, I don't know the name of the park and I apologize. The, the park down by the, uh, by the railroad and the Mill Street, the, park. the Mill Street Park. The, it's it's just not. It's clearly not big enough. Okay. Um, we had discussions about putting it in the basketball court, um, but the model that we bought is requires it to be staked, so you clearly can't stake into a basketball court. Um, and then we did. Uh, Ryan was here. We talked to Highway about plowing to be able to get down into into Lewis, and a few weeks ago we put it up on the um, on the soccer field, thinking it was the widest, flattest area that we had. It turns out that the soccer field isn't as flat isn't as you would it think it is. Um, uh, support from fire, which we're thankful for, went down to to fill it for us, and when they did. We had water going it over the end of one side and no water on the other. Um, so it wasn't tenable to do that. Now it's snowed and, you know, we're, we're it's pretty much there for the, it's where it is for the year, but we're not going to be skating on it. So what we're talking about now, I think, is forward looking, right. forward reaching. Um, and we're back to request to go back to the common. Um, Understanding the concerns that that uh, the cultural council has, they're they're beyond valid. Um, what we would propose is to have it on the opposite side of so on the what I would call the back side of the gazebo. Um, it's an area that's big enough to to put it. Um, we'd also like to we have small, movable, fairly fairly portable. Um, bleachers that we would deploy to the side of it as a place to sit so that folks wouldn't have to go up onto the gazebo to potentially use the benches to put skates on and off okay. to try to address that concern. Um, but really our biggest reason for wanting it or hoping to have it placed there is it's 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 lit, it's well lit naturally from the street lights. It's it's central. You have the issue of um, when it's down at Lewis Field, it's the police going down to just do a drive-by policing of it. It's a more policeable area to be on the common, um, and it's it's just more central. So th that's our proposal, um, and for again. For next year, right? right. So, right, um, we're 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 well. The, the horses. It's well buried. Out of the it's barn. buried now. So yeah. it's and that's and that's fine. That's fine. Right. Um, the library mm -hmm. folks yeah. uh, are allowing us. We're going to be storing it in the in the barn in the new building. I don't know what that building is officially called, but the Heller we'll, House. But, oh, they were calling it the Heller House. Okay. Um, so I, I think the library is still referring to it as Barnes the is the, is the, is the Felton Felton House. The so, what house? I think it's the Felton. How about 18 Common? What, what, <laughs> the barn the there. We all know where that is, right? So we're going to yeah, be storing it there. Yeah. Um, they did offer as well the property to the left of it. So you have the library, the barn, the house, and then there's the yard. Yeah. Unfortunately, two things. One, I believe the septic is right in the middle of that. I don't know what the weight of something like that is. I know you can't put pools on top of stuff. Mm. 
but in walking that down and looking at it, it has similar, Issues. while it looks flat, yeah. <laughs> it has similar sort of Whoa, sloping, yeah. sloping issues. So yeah. um, again, I, I just think we um, would like to respectfully request the, the use of the common again. And with the understanding that we've looked at the options that we think are available to us in the safety component of it, it's, it's the genesis of the request. Okay. So. That's and I guess the final thing, just as a comment, is um, we weren't aware of, and, and we do owe an apology, we weren't aware of damage to the benches until the next year when we came back around to it. We certainly would have paid for any repair to those things. Um, I think on both sides of the, more on our side probably, communication wasn't as good as it should have been. And so, and so there's a, you know, so yeah, so there's, a, I am formally apologizing because there should have been more communication. So. Um, and that's, well, that's, I think, first of all, that's a great starting point, right? So it sounds like fundamentally a lot of, a lot of what went on previously with this is surrounding kind of around two things, respect and communication, right? And one of the challenges is, is, is that, um, you know, one of the challenges with anything that's like un, unsupervised is there's a, there's a risk. Because you know, there's people that hang out on the common all the time that may or may not be associated with different events, and I'm sure that that create issues all the time. And um, and, and just to understand, we're we're not we're not really here today so much to make a decision as to have this full dialogue publicly and just kind of get it all out there. We may, you know, and, and I think really the the next thing I'd love to hear is is from the the cultural council. Um, you know, kind of, does that represent largely what your perception was of, of how this went down, what some of your concerns are, um, and then, you know, is there any level of openness if there's a, if there's a clear agreement of what the, you know, if you all, if in having this discussion, if you all would, would be willing to take a look at your initial decision, determine what kind of interest or value there is in the community because I mean your events are, are huge on that event as well and in, in terms of you know that's where we have the concerts that's where we focus a lot of our community events um, I remember before we got the ice rink there seemed to be a lot of interest in the community to have that because it, it kind of fits in with all of the, the type of events that I associate you know our common usage with and I don't know if it's something that, that that's even something that you're willing to consider but I'd, I'd love to hear if if that's kind of an accurate rendition did you all have any voice in the original get the <coughs> ice rink for the community or was it was it purely with the with the recreational committee because it had seemed initially like there was a lot of community support for it so well, um, years prior, we actually talked about, I don't know who was on the committee. Would you mind coming, coming up, Jean? Uh, yeah. Here, for you. Jean Lytle. There we go. Kathy Landry. Um, I'm not sure who was on the committee back, but way before um, the rec committee brought this to um, the town. But we talked about, as cultural council, having an ice rink. But um, as I said in the email that I sent, that a lot of things look good on paper, but when you actually initiate them, then they're not such a good idea. Um, a lot of towns are not putting their ice rinks back up because of issues with damage and no uh, maintenance and so on and so forth. So, um, so it wasn't like we hate ice rinks. <laughs> No, no, and as a group, we also contributed to the purchase of the ice rink. Okay. That was, we also gave money to that because we thought it was a good idea at the time. Um, and as Jeff said, all, everything that went wrong, they, they didn't just pick up benches and move them. They picked them up, tossed them haphazardly in, in a snowbank. If that was your memorial bench, how would you feel? Do we want that again? No, nah, I don't know about that. Um, 
They also promised us signage that would say, um, at your own risk, which covers the town. The poles went up for the signs, but the signs never went up. Never ever did the signs appear. That's bad. There are also were concerns about um, the pallets or whatever the wood was that they connected the uh, brick walkway with the to, for the kids to, to step in. Mm -hmm. It was pretty dangerous. <laughs> it, the edge of the ice rink is, is say it's this high. Mm -hmm. Where you came up the walkway that's like brick onto that patio level, they had like a pallet or something so you could walk across to get into the ice rink without stepping over the side of it. Mm -hmm. And it was a little iffy. That's what she's trying to say. And I understand that's the past. But yes. um, we voted to not have it on the, on the common again. We reconsidered when we were asked to reconsider. We all voted again. Same vote. It was only one person didn't vote um, against having it there again. Um, we looked at the pros and cons. Um, the spot that you're talking about goes like that. You know? It has a, used <laughs> That's flood that area. level. <laughs> Back in the day, I understand they used to flood that area to make because, an ice rink because, because it's a was... dip. Because it's a dip. <laughs> so it's like a pool. So you're not going to be able to get a rink there unless you plaster it up against the back of the gazebo, and we're going to have the same problems that we had before. Well, it's better to have a dip in the middle than a it's pretty unlevel over there. It goes like this. It's I trust. I believe more unlevel um, than you yeah, think. Just look. Out of state, right against the back of the gazebo as well, with all the electric that's, there. That's, that's not intended. Um, there's got to be a flat spot down at Louisfield. They have better parking. It's off-street parking. When you have snow and everything else up here in town, they're gonna have to park on the street, and it, you know, not. Over by your house. How narrow is that street? We're going to park cars there to, you know, no, to no. ice skate. I'd love to see people ice skating. I just don't think it belongs on the common. Um, Lewisfield has to have a flat spot. They've got a gate. If they're, if they don't like the way the ice rink has frozen, if they don't like what's going on, they can close the gate. People can't go in there. Close your gate. We're done. Ice rink is not open. You can't do that on the common. You can't say, you can say the ice rink is closed because several times it was posted on Facebook. Ice right. rink is not right. ready, do not use it. People yep. were on it anyway, making a mess, wrecking the ice rink, throwing sticks in it, yeah. doing whatever, and it, nothing could be done about that. At least they'd be able to lock them out if they're at Lewisfield. Lock out the car traffic. I don't know about foot traffic, but that's one step ahead of where we are on the common. Adam has a question. Yep. Adam, just, um, yep. Uh, I was just wondering if, if either uh, committee has spoken with um, Sturbridge as to what they do with their skating rink that they have on their common. Like, what if they have any guidelines? If they have any, you know, if their uh, cultural council has any suggestions or whatnot on how they handle possible vandalism or um, kind of destruction of anything? Uh, if the uh, rec committee for has spoken with Surbridge's rec committee about you know how they if they've looked at other spots what they've done you know maybe how they've handled uh, doing the rink and stuff like that with lighting and police patrols and whatnot just curious if either committee has spoken to Sturbridge because I know it's been mentioned that some of the uh, I think it was North Brookfield um, doesn't have theirs on the common they have it in another place um, but I know that Sturbridge has theirs right on the common because it is centralized it is well lit there it's very close to the police station you know all sorts of reasons um, but I was just wondering if either committee had spoken to Sturbridge, Sturbridge's committees. See we how they not. handle it. We have not. I went by the ice rink in Sturbridge this evening. There's six inches of snow on it. <laughs> well, yeah. uh, outside of the snowfall, um, we have not reached out to them. However, I've, I've walked that before the snow. They have, um, they have a uh, more, um, let's call it robust. They actually have a set of stairs. <laughs> for entering and exiting, the, which is a valid point. Thank you for bringing that up as well. Um, they have that, and then they also have ca uh, staked caution tape. So it's staked, and it's like, I don't think it's a police, like, don't cross police thing, but it's like a black and yellow caution type of tape. 
that they have surrounded and they, <coughs> they do have a sign that says, um, I believe it's, I don't know if it, I can't remember if it was closed or something basically stating that currently it's not, um, it's not in use. So no, we have not reached out to them, but certainly have looked at it as a, uh, how they do it. I also, uh, Westbrookville has it on their common. I, no, they no, no, they will they not. They put took theirs away. Okay. They yep. will not put it up again. They told them they can use the frog pond. They're done. Too much damage. Too much. Too much damage. Was it North Brookfield has one up? Or drive by there. That's I don't Sturbridge. know about Sturbridge has it. Yeah, but he said North Brookfield too. So oh, yeah. I've seen Sturbridge's. So they have it in a different space. Yeah. The other benefit to Sturbridge's. Sturbridge's ice rink is on the common, but they also have off-street parking. That's easier and safer for them to get there and park and yeah. let the kids get. Like, I had to pick my son up today after school from the late bus, and I had to pull into the middle of Route uh, 148 so that he could even get in the car, yeah. and that was dangerous. So how are you going to get a kid out of a car to get to the ice rink? Well, you could say that about the churches when I mean well, we, get, yeah, we get I mean yeah, I, I mean yeah, not to be not to be funny but I, I sit there and watch every Sunday during the winter where we've got you know you know yeah and we don't always cars have down snow, there anyway you know, so it's still a concern yeah. but you'll also <laughs> see that the Sturbridge often the Sturbridge one says that it's closed because there are a lot of just reasons wasted days right. <laughs> because it's just slush right and so. uh, and on those days, it's not very pretty. I believe the Sturbridge Highway Department is the one who maintains the one on the Sturbridge Common. I don't know. And that's why they I don't, don't have the staffing to shovel it off and stuff. They get to it when they can get to it. But, and, it's, and it's a lot of maintenance if it's going to be done. And, and you can't watch kids that are unsupervised because parents let them go without supervision. And, and they're throwing tree branches in the ice and making a mess. I mean, that's not something you can you can't fix it. prevent. It would be fair to say that you couldn't prevent that anyway, would you say? This is yeah. true, this is true. I'm just saying, I don't think it looks very pretty on the common to... Uh... That, so, that was the only question I had, thank you. Okay. Are we done? I guess so. <gasps> Okay. Um, all right. So, <laughs> sorry about the fact we have to slide you back and forth. Um, thank you very much. Mm -hmm. it sounds like there's a couple of options that we have come spring, because, like you said between the freezing cold weather and the amount of snow we've gotten. It, it's kind of water under the bridge, so to speak, for, for this year. <laughs> um, Is there a way to prep an area at yeah, Lewis Field in anticipation of putting the ice rink up next year? Well, certainly we had a discussion that as we put it up, uh, we put it up on a day when it was Probably six degrees. Well, if we would have done it a week <laughs> earlier, mm -hmm. the ground wouldn't have been as hard. Yeah. <laughs> it's basically it's sort of the point, right? Yeah. So um, we did have a discussion about uh, putting it up very early, like November-ish, mm -hmm. you know. Um, you know, there clearly are flat areas at Lewis Field. I mean, there are, there's, there's the baseball field, there's the softball field, which aren't used in the winter. I. I would feel very, I would personally not feel comfortable putting them in those places just from a straight visibility and police ability. Mm. And, and light, there's no light at all. So, right. Um, it is true, there are flat areas, absolutely. Um, they're just not in a place that's, that feels safe to me. Okay. Um, so that, I mean, that's sort of, I mean, that's an observation now. Now, I, I, I would say... They're supposed to be supervised if they're there, so... What do you mean they're supposed to be supervised if they're there? Depending on the age of the youth that are at... One of the things the rec committee had brought up before, not tonight, was they would have different rules, and the rules would be if you were under a certain age, you needed to be with a parent or an adult to be 
you use in the ring. Okay. So I don't really know about that particular concern. It's, it's going to be dark down there. Lock the gates, don't let them in after 8 o'clock or whatever. When it's dark, you can't skate. I don't know what to tell you. <laughs> I think we're at a crossroads. So yeah. um, it's water under the, as you stated, it's uh, it's certainly water under the bridge. Um, it, it's it, it's clearly disappointing, and I, and I understand. Their stance, of yeah. Any you, other concerns? I, yeah, you understand their questions. concerns. You understand their stance. No question. Um, um. <laughs> so I'm going to put it out to anybody that if anybody has an idea of where they think it would be. It's 70 by 40-ish, so it's a fairly it's large. It's large. It's, it's fairly substantial. So, well, it, you know, I, I'm I'm wondering. What about battery lights? Yeah, good oh. battery lights that go yeah, on. Yeah, and, and I think I think you know those type. I mean, heck, you know, I I I would say to you that um, our snack shack has popcorn machines and hot dog machines stolen out of it. So, to you know, the lights at the, at the pavilion get stones thrown at them and we have no light bulbs in our pavilion. Yeah. Right? So yeah. It, you're, it, all of those things are, are valid and, and are things that we would we will consider forward moving. Um, but outside of that, certainly we would be open to any type of, type of suggestion. Um, you know, I think I had thought about approaching the uh, Protestant church Congregation Church. They have a lot behind there that is next to the uh, ambulance barn. Yep. Um, I don't know that it's flat. I haven't. I didn't walk it down. Another flat area, sort of central to town, would be. I don't know if the Catholic Church has a flat area in the back. It's just. It's finding a large flat area in a more well lit, easily drive by of a live police area. Yeah. Yeah, it's liability issues. Yeah, well, and that's that leads to the next level of uh, as it stood, it was under the. Uh, that's, that's well, I'm, I'm, I'm literally I'm, just spitballing. So, so, so well, um, well, I think this, I think, I, I think, I think our takeaway here is um, cultural council is firm in their current stance that they're not really willing to consider, and it sounds like even with a letter of agreement and and some real clearly defined like joint meetings and planning. It, it doesn't sound like there's a, a, a lot of interest there in 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 a more regulated approach to having it on on the on the common. Okay. Um, message sent, message received. Got it. Um, I do think that there's probably some better option, even even with regards to Lewis Field, even if it means we have to invest a little bit in order to have a, a space that um, is intended for it as it um as we get in there and i think that well i think you have to be careful getting too far away from the entrance though with lewis field because fundamentally the only way that they're going to have access i think one thing that's very a very legitimate concern that the the rec council raised and i don't think you guys hit on it very hard here is that the only way to get to some of the inner spaces in um, Lewis Field is to plow, and we are already challenged in meeting our plowing obligations in this town, despite a lot of great cooperative work by the town employees and our, our emergency operators. So the farther we have to get away from the main roads, it sounds really great, yeah, let's go put it down on the softball field. It's not, it's not reasonable to expect timely access to those areas during snow season, fundamentally. Um, so we would have to look for something, if it was gonna be on Lewis Field, it would have to be something up close to the road. Um, you know, or even, I think there's some, some property that might even be either town owned or going through tax title that's adjacent, that we might have the opportunity to clear and level for something like that if we, if we decided to go that direction. Um, it sounds like it's a, I want to call it a spring project to kind of maybe get somebody in that can survey for that type of like levelness that we need and and see what's the closest space we have and see what kind of investment it would take to create a space up close to the road up close to the stonewall-ish area 
that gets you that accessibility um, while it's in a space that it fundamentally has access to parking and the like. So. Um, well, I think a bigger, <clears throat> honestly, a bigger picture, you know, really, really, really big picture uh -huh. would be <clears throat> ideally the space on the other side of the, the uh, drainage ditch that was filled. Yeah. Um, I mean, if, if you're having that conversation, it's let's level all of it and yep. get two soccer fields there, which is what should be there, and then you have a flat space for an ice rink on the field. So if you're suggesting that there's uh, that there's a will to invest money in that way, then there are things that are I, I think way, way more important. That cl I mean, think about this. Kids are playing soccer on the field, and they're running uphill. Yeah. Like, to the point that I, you don't even realize it yeah. until you, like, so, so, I mean, so, put so, a marble on so, it. So, so, fundamentally, maybe that's the discussion, right? I mean, what is the space that we need for kids in the town associated with Lewis Field? And we've started to make improvements. We've, we've got the walking track. It's going to be just about done, from what I understand. It, the, the work finally got done, and if it wasn't for the snow, we'd probably be done already. Um, you know, what's the next, what's the next phase in terms of needs of the town and, and can we segue in creating a space that could also be used for this into something that already has that legitimate need that, that we can make a good case for, you know, we, I hate to put it this way, you don't know whether you have will in this town to get something done or not until we ask. So, you know, I think people could see, hey, we need more and better soccer fields, right? I mean, there's uh, there, uh, there's hardly a person in this town that doesn't have a kid or a grandkid that that you know plays plays or played youth soccer, right? So maybe that's the approach: is let's try to restructure that to get more for the land that we already own, and with an eye towards, hey, this is an off-season use of that space. So I mean, maybe it's for the better to to be looking for a home for it if it means we can get. Um, people thinking about how do we need to use this land that, that was intended to get enhanced for Lewis Field, right? So, so what, do you, what do you all think about that approach is maybe come up with what we want phase two to look like for, for Lewis Field this year? Because even if only the prep work is done for that, it might be enough to get the rink next year even if the fields don't come until the year after, so. That's a fair action to move forward on. Yeah. <clears throat> so, um, and then that gives us all some time to, to chew on it, see what our options are, and, and see where we go about getting it up early enough so that you're not trying to beat it into, beat it into submission with frozen ground either, mm -hmm. so. When I was young, <laughs> I had an ice rink in the backyard, yeah, and it certainly wasn't level, but we we put in some water and let that freeze and then add it in it. Yeah. It worked out. Even though it wasn't level, instead of trying to do it all at once, it worked. Yeah, so I, I think it's, you know, it's a, when you're trying to do something, when, when you're trying to do something on a, a and again, it's it's easier when it's your own home and you don't have to coordinate around volunteer schedules. I mean, you all know as, as well as anybody else how hard it is to, to keep stuff running when you're doing it in your quote unquote spare time, right? And that's the challenge, right? There's no ill intent from anybody in this room about not wanting to do what's best. It's just the definition of what's what's best for everybody that we, we don't really have 100% agreement on, so. Um, decent discussion. Um, you know, I, I think it's unfortunate that we we don't have a shared vision of of what of uh, of it being in one particular place, um, but it is what it is right now. So let's let's see what we could do about you know identifying what's what's the next field improvement we want at, want at Lewis Field and, and would it potentially be in a space that is advisable to put this next year if we could actually get the land at least leveled in, in preparation for it. Does that 
sound fair? And we'll try to support that. And I suspect that your cultural council cohorts might help you get some will to get some support for your project if it'll keep this away from the green. Does that sound like a fair deal? So. Um, Sounds good. Thank you for taking the time tonight. Yeah. Certainly so. appreciate it. I'm glad we at least are having the discussion because I think it's better than. I, I work virtual right now, and email is lovely, but sometimes just sitting down in a room and talking with people makes a heck of a lot more sense, and at least we can come up with, even if it's not one answer or the other answer, maybe a third way that'll get us what, what we are looking for, even if it's not exactly what we want. So thank you for taking the time. Thank you. Thank you. And if any of you have a budget and haven't sent it in, the deadline is Thursday. Thank you very much for your time. <laughs> <laughs> Public service announcement there. <laughs> so, um, so I appreciate it. Um, anybody else have anything that they want to share um, relative to this? Thank you. Thanks all. Let's pick up where we left off. I don't know. We were going to do the union grievance next. We were going to do the union grievance next, weren't we? We were, yes. Wow, we don't even have them, so we can at least go over the information. All right. You know what, let me go ahead and get the announcements knocked out while we're... Well, we're Adam, can you stay for the whole meeting? Is yeah. everything okay there that you can hang out for the whole thing? Yeah, I, I can stay for the whole meeting. Okay, okay. Good. And I can read fast, so we're good. Yeah, that's fine. Awesome. So announcements, Brookfield Fire Department was awarded the FY22 Firefighter Safety Equipment Grant Award by the State Department of Fire Services for the amount of $12,375. Kudos to the fire department and its efforts on behalf of the town. Reminder that the winter parking ban is in effect, uh, ban is in effect from uh, November 15th to April 1st. Uh, from 11 p.m. to 6 a.m. and any vehicle in the town right-of-way will be ticketed and towed at the owner's expense. Um, and then a quick report on the warrants that I signed earlier. Or what was that last week? That was last. Mm -hmm. That was last week already. Goodness. Um, the week before. Yeah, the actually. Week before. Um, before. Yeah. So it was an expense warrant for uh, 111.22 for 422,000. Seventy-nine dollars and thirty cents payroll warrant for uh, on one twelve twenty-two for one hundred eighty thousand four hundred six dollars and twelve cents withholding warrant for one twelve twenty-two for twenty-nine thousand eight hundred forty-nine dollars and four cents proven expense warrant for one twenty-five twenty-two for two hundred thirty-four thousand six hundred ninety dollars and eighty cents approved a payroll warrant of for one twenty-six twenty-two for one. $185,398.36 and finally approved a withholding warrant of a, uh, for one twenty six twenty two for $67,548.72. Uh, so, um, so we keep the wheels on the bus with that. All right, so we had a grievance determination um, did did you get a chance to review the hard copy, Adam? I don't feel a need to read the whole document. No, no I've, I've read everything. Okay, so um, so can I get a motion uh, ratify? We're ratifying this, correct? Yes. So ratifying the response that we provided to uh, the police. It has Union. not been provided yet. This okay. is this is a, approval of, of your decision that you made as written. As written. Okay. So, uh, can I get a motion to uh, approve the written document? Yep. Yeah, I'll make a motion to approve the written document. All right, and I'll second it. All in favor? Aye. Dollar aye. Coughlin aye. All right, and it is getting signed. Right now, make sure that that gets with all of the exhibits um, attached gets to the um, police department. Great. Okay, so when we have the next item on the agenda is some uh, interfund borrowing uh, for the down payment for the fire truck. And Adam, I had sent you, it's a convoluted motion that is very specific. So I sent that to you in an email. 
so that we would get all the we would get all the terminology properly so that there doesn't get any kickback. Yep. And just to be clear, this was a great partnership between the fire department and our town administrator and our financial team. Uh, in that by paying for the chassis up front, uh, we're going to be saving $8,000 total on the bill mm -hmm. uh, because in essence, because the company that's providing the equipment doesn't have to borrow the money to buy the chassis, we're paying for the chassis. They actually give us a break up for them not having to pay that interest and all the administrative fees and all the stuff associated with it. So, so can you go ahead with that motion, Adam? I'll make a motion uh, to authorize the interdepartmental borrowing in the amount of $291,290 from the stabilization, stabilization, excuse me, for the down payment of a fire truck to be returned to stabilization once the borrowing for the new fire truck has been completed. And I will second that motion. All in favor? Dollar aye. Coughlin aye. All right, so the next thing that we have on the agenda is the um, Patriot contract ratification. So this uh, is relative to a software licensing agreement to move to a different assessor software uh, because the current software is just creating a huge amount of rework and, and, uh, and uh, extra processing and making it virtually impossible to meet uh, our deadlines. Uh, so this is a contract that um, fundamentally will start us into this new software in time for the next tax year. Uh, so can I get a motion to um, go ahead and um, are we ratifying this as well? Yes, this is just a ratification. Okay, so ratify the selection of Patriot uh, as our new assessing software. I'll make a motion to ratify the selection of uh, Patriot for the new assessing software. All right, I'll second it. All in favor? Jollick or aye? Coughlin aye. All right, and it looks like this has already got an electronic signature, so we're good there. Yes. Okay. Uh, next, we've got an appointment. This is to appoint um, Amy Lee Carmody uh, to the personnel board as the head of HR. Um, it was suggested by Linda Lincoln that she should be part of the board um, because it's her wheelhouse, basically, and it will fill out the membership. We'll have a five-member board. Great. So, Adam, can we get that motion? Yep, I'll make a motion to um, for the appointment uh, as read. Okay, and that's for Amy, Amy Lane Carmody uh, to the personnel board. And uh, I'll second that. All in favor? Mr. Jollick or aye? Coughlin aye. All right, so we've got, um, we've already had the discussion on that, so yeah, we're down eight, to eight, the eight, MOU, MOU for Renewal Police Dispatch Service. Out of order. All right, here we go. So fundamentally, this is uh, An MOU that is so just no further cost. our viewing audience. The MOU is a memorandum, memorandum of understanding, understanding between two municipal or, or departmental uh, enterprises. Enterprises. So sorry, I interrupted. Nope, that's fine. I'm sorry. I'm I'm used to people understanding that term. So, that's okay. <laughs> um, so fundamentally, they are providing us dispatch services for all of our um, emergency responders. And so this is an agreement with the state police to continue to provide um, dispatching services to us without us necessarily providing any compensation to them. Correct. So they do actually have the ability to charge, but they don't. They choose so not to. Okay. They choose not to at this time. Okay, great. So uh, Adam, can I get a motion to uh, sign the memorandum of understanding between us and the state police i will make a motion uh for signing to have you sign the um memorandum with the state police all right i'll second it all in favor jollicker aye coughlin aye
great. Um, so the next thing on the agenda is a ice and snow deficit spend request from the highway department. Okay. Um, did they come back with a list of what their current expenses are and how much they're looking to get? I should have asked this when we had Ryan. Because typically when they make these requests, beyond just making the request, they say, hey, um, based on our best estimate at this point in time, we're, we're looking for, you know, 25, 50, whatever. This is their season. second request already this year, I believe. Mm, I don't think I so. Don't no, no. I, I thought I remembered. I maybe, so. maybe we just talked about it. I think we talked about it, okay. but I, but um, oh. that's not the case. I don't think. But but historically speaking, what they've done is they've provided, and they will need this when they go to advisory about it. So the way this the language is couched is that this is what their balances are right now. They are not in Overspent deficit, yet. so they're asking if they need to, yep. can they deficit spend? Um, I don't know how anybody could anticipate how much snow you're going to get in New England. No, but what they can do is they can look at how much they've deficit spent over the last five years and take a good guess. Oh, okay. So. All right. Yep, 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 yep. Now, Not do to you, be funny. So I have a good feel for it. So what I would recommend tonight is that we approve them for 35000 but tell them to come back with a, a, a number. Uh, so okay. I can give them a, a 35, not to exceed 35 deficit. For without, now, without more permission, without more permission, okay. and 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 to ask them for um, ask either them or Lori for um, you know the details on the accounts to date, and if they you know and things that Ryan will know. Okay, so things you don't know, how much snow you're going to get, things you do know. Do I think I have enough materials through the end of the year or not, and am I going to have to you know buy that? prior to the end of the season or when I buy is it going to be replenishment for the next season stuff like that he should at least have an idea okay and he normally provides this information uh typically they yeah I think Cindy did Cindy did fast okay That's my guess. well and Cindy knew because like and even last year even though Cindy was there I had to remind everybody that this that typically we at least make an effort to take a wag at it Okay. It's, it's not a science, but is it's... Is this something that you normally raise on the recap? Or is this something that you, you budget for, and then if you didn't budget enough, then you get the, the remainder on the recap? Um, we typically will deficit spend it and try to not put it on the recap by going ahead and, and using free cash the following year to pay the deficit before we start the year. Okay, so I think I may not have asked my question properly. So... In anticipation of snow and ice coming up, we have a snow and ice line in another town where we put in what we think without this budget, we will deficit spend. So we're actually putting it on the budget at the town meeting so that we don't have to actually deficit spend. So you, do you have a line item for snow and we ice? We do. We have a line item okay. for snow and ice. I think it's and at is 100K. it typically fully funded? It's typically funded at the level that we have it, knowing that it's probably not going to be quite enough, even though we've raised it a couple of times over the years. Okay, all right. And we don't, we we intentionally keep it below the threshold of what we think we're going to spend because it's the it's one of those lines where if you it's spend one of the it only one year, lines you can yeah you can yeah deficit spend so so. you can deficit spend so which is. Good because that would be a nightmare for a New Englander. Right, <laughs> if you right, because right? you you'd be having a town meeting right, every snowstorm. Right, and the and the one time that you you know double how much you fund, we're not going to get any snow at all. And once you fund to that level, yeah, the problems trying. So to free cash that. is a good way to cover that, so it doesn't hit the tax rate. Right? That's a really good idea. Yeah, so that's how we have typically okay. done it in the past. Is that we we fund it at? I think we try to target like seventy five percent of what we expect the okay. actual snow to be and then expect to 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 spend somewhere in the on the order of of an extra 25 percent i think we're a little bit below 75 percent right now based on the history but i think one of the things we need to look at for the budget this year is what has our total spend been on snow and ice for the last five years and 
fund it to that 75 or 80 percent okay. for next year um but i would recommend i mean what's in the account is really if it's a bad storm that's really only one or one more bad storm mm -hmm. so and we're only in the beginning of february so we can't expect it's only going to be one more bad storm right. so so authorizing 35 would get us at least a couple of decent storms in the account and give us some time to look at the numbers as to what the what the full NTE should probably be for that. Okay. So can I get a motion to that effect, Adam? Oh, what did you say was the amount to? I would recommend either thirty five or forty thousand, somewhere in there. All right. Yeah, I'll make a uh, a recommendation to um uh, yeah, permission to up to forty thousand um, dollars for deficit, um, with the request that uh, they come back with a uh, kind of a detailed explanation or detailed. Uh, was it? Yeah, a detailed yeah, yeah, the, yeah. The the ledger, the detailed ledger on what yes. they've spent and why yes. and where it's gone. So, uh, I'll second that. All in favor? Uh, Jolliker, aye. Coughlin, aye. So. And we're supposed to be getting another big storm this weekend if the yeah. plan holds the way it is. So. Yeah, just what we needed. It'll be so much fun. <laughs> All right. So we've got special use permit. One of them I think is for this weekend coming. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. So we've got... Top of the um, Did you say we don't need to actually read these? We just need to. No, you don't actually have to read. Yeah. Them. And and then in. Well. Yeah. <laughs> the system approval. So we've got two. One for the for two twelve and one for two nineteen. Adam, can I get a motion to approve? You, you want to maybe make it stipulate that this is. Yeah. That any ice fishing, um, that the ice needs to be clean. And it mm. needs to be left the way it's found because we've received complaints Points. from residents who are not pleased with the way yeah. the lake has been left. Um, broken bottles have been washing up on the shore after the ice melts, so people are leaving their uh, trash out on the ice. And, and, and I can't see if that's included in the comments that's on this one. I think they usually are. It talks about litter on every one of them and, and the permit that they give out has a little note about litter. About litter, okay. Yeah. So. Um, all right. So there's the note. Yeah, there's a note on on. Please pick the up all litter and trash. Yeah. So so, based on what I've heard from some of the residents, that it would be it may be a good idea for the town to keep track after these fishing derbies and consider whether or not they follow through on that trash pickup as to whether or not they get another permit next year yeah hmm. so you know i'm thinking you've got a, a private beach and you get your children out there or your grandchildren out there or you out there or your pets out there and they're walking on broken glass that wasn't there when you cleaned the beach before winter right so that's something to consider if, if the derby is left is that something we could ask the chief to have somebody swing by after and see well, what the condition is or, or we can the I, right? don't, I don't know if, if who the right people would be for that um, but yeah I don't see why we can't ask yeah Well, just because if they have left anything, technically it's littering. Mm -hmm. so. We don't have a good way to keep track of after whose events we see. Yeah. We see issues. So, so we'll we'll know. So we know what the date of the derby is. We know who the event belongs to. Yeah. We asked the chief to send somebody out to take a look at the ice and see if, if it's left with fires, burning logs out there, broken bottles or anything like that. But I don't yeah. know how they would see that unless they walked out to onto the ice. Onto the ice. Yeah. So I don't know um, how to monitor. 
I guess. The only thing that I had thought of, but I don't even know how feasible it would be, was if it'd be possible to, like I've seen this at, at other public spaces um, that required approval to use it for like a big events, was that you pay a fee to use it and then someone, you know, if someone came down and looked at it, whoever that would be, they signed a piece of paper or something that said, yes, I've reviewed it, their stuff's all okay, they can get their fee. Their deposit back. Their, their deposit back. Because and these go don't. through DCR, I don't know that we can do that. Yeah. The office okay, yeah, that's, voting. So. That's, the, that, that's the kicker is there's a lot of other uh, groups and stuff that are part of it, not just the town. Yeah, so I don't know. I mean, that's something that we can ask. Can you reach out to Yes, Fish? I will. But do you remember, Beth, that we remember the there was some talk about charging them for using it a few years ago? And uh, the Fish and Game really nixed that idea. But I can... Well, I think there's a, well, difference, there's a difference you, between right? a charge... There's a difference between yeah. a charge and basically a security bond against bad behavior. Yeah, so, so I, yeah. I think that's... I think. It's really more of a it's really more of a, a small bond to, yeah. to compensate for the fact that we might need which them. will be returned as soon as as, as soon we verify as, the condition. Yeah. So, but then we need somebody to go out and check the ice. Right, and that's the problem. Mm -hmm. So, um, hmm. we don't really have an entity for that. Probably. What about the harbor <coughs> Yeah. Ooh. Yeah. No. I mean, in the winter, the harbor master, I don't believe, really has many duties. Oh yeah, that's right. I couldn't hear you because sometimes yeah, you harbor master, yeah, on. yeah, that's perfect. Get a little bit something to keep him busy. And he's so good at getting people to clean up things. <laughs> that's right. It's kind <laughs> of like his forte. It is right? kind of his forte. <laughs> So we get him a list of the derbies and ask if he'll if he'll just swing by if after. He'll swing by after and check the ice after they're done, or maybe first thing in the morning right or the day. next day. Yeah. Yeah. So that would be a good, and then that way we could start, and we, and we should just keep a file of any letters we have to send out because we find trash, and then the next time they apply for yeah. a permanent. And I still think we need to check with DCR and see if there's... I'm going. I'm, I'm going to run that by him anyway. Yeah. Yeah, make sure it's not a use... He knows it's, it's not, not a use fee. fee. It's, a, it's a bond yes. against yeah. Yeah. the condition. And it'll be left. returned if, if the condition is left. Um, of course, Lori's going to hate that because we'd have to then cut checks back to these entities. So we'd have to set them up in our receivables. Yeah. Or, if it protects little feet, I, I think, think it's, I, I, I think know, it's worth it. I, I, can I agree, see it's worth it. Children not avoiding the glass and parents going, oh, 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 it's it's the dogs. Yeah, it's the dogs. Well, you know. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, just, okay. the dog that almost played its foot completely bled out because of glass. So. Yeah. Okay, so we've got a. Wage authorization for uh, emergency operator for Claude uh, Mazzaro Jr. Um, for 2026 an hour. Uh, it looks like it has been approved by the personnel board. Yes, all of them that you have in there have been approved yep. by the personnel board, and we've they're got, mostly for plowing. Yep, and we've got Cole uh, Dunjewowski, uh, Sheila Witz. No, I'm not doing that. <laughs> Brett Pajilowicz, and then we've got a firefighter, uh, Kayla Laporte Rivera. Um, for on call, and that looks to be it. Mm -hmm. So, can I get a motion to go ahead and sign the uh, wage authorizations? I'll make a motion to uh, sign the wage authorizations as presented in red. Okay, great. Uh, I'll second it. All in favor? Dollar cry. Coughlin I. Is this two packs of them? Or is it a what, what is this? Those were already signed. Those were already signed. Oh, yeah. The ones that, the ones that are turned over, they just did not fold them. I'm just going to say per vote. 
so that they don't look for a second signature. Approving the selectmen's minutes for 1 4 22. And yes, you're reading that correctly. I was going to say, I missed that email for the 315. So we've wow. got, we've got, we've got one, we've got sets for January 4th of 2022, and then we have a set of minutes for 331 15. So I think. We have a challenge there because I you can you can you don't have to pr approve them for content. Okay. You can approve them as for publication for publication only. Yeah, because I don't think I know I know Adam wasn't on the board, and I don't think I was yet. He wasn't even living in Brookfield at that time. So you definitely were not. I am trying to catch up on some of the. There are some ones from the past that. So it wasn't formative though. Was <laughs> okay. So this was the one with the mask policy and then the uh, one that returned the grievance information from. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you're not releasing those executive sessions. Right, Just Well, understood. once the issue is over, they're no longer private. Right. They need so to be released. Do you want to release So them? since the grievance has been filed and it's been resolved, um, and once we find out whether or not they're going forward, you can release them at the next meeting. Okay. But until we go, they go forward, they shouldn't be released yet. But they will be as soon as the issue is closed. Okay. And then we have the... So can I get a motion to approve these these sets of minutes? I'll make a motion to uh, approve the selectmen's minutes. All right, I'll second. All in favor? Jolly or aye? Coughlin aye. All right. And then we've got minutes and reports from other committees. We've got, there's clearly been a backlog, so we've got, uh, July, <clears throat> July, August, um, September, October, November minutes, and then, or, I'm sorry, uh, month and report, and then also December of 2021. <clears throat> And uh, included in these reports include several anniversaries. <coughs> We've got uh, paramedic Ashley Marks uh, being recognized for nine years with Brookfield. We've got paramedic Dan Driscoll, uh, who has 12 years with the town of Brookfield. Uh, we have our We've got to do something special for Donna. I can't believe we let this anniversary go by and we didn't say something about it. Um, as of October, uh, Chief Donna LaFleur has 45 years Wow! with the ambulance. Wow. Um, and then our EMT advanced Matthew Roderick has 13 years with us. And then EMT Terry Anderson has 28 years with us. Um, so that's um, that's just amazing. Awesome. Yeah. Um, 
we really need to get the records straight so that we're we're recognizing these anniversaries. Okay. So uh, we've got a highway department report. Um, includes a lot of work around um, obviously the winter winter prep and the winter work in December. Uh, a lot of work associated with the Central Street project. Um, Back in your cave, Dragon. <laughs> I was going to say. Um, we had some late late in the year leaf cleanup, part of the snow hitting. <clears throat> and lots of truck repair. There's a lot of truck maintenance in there. Oh, yeah, a lot, a lot of, of truck, truck maintenance. maintenance. So, and then we have correspondence. All right, so we've got some praise for our emergency personnel. Um, <clears throat> so we have um, one resident uh, who uh, wanted to thank everyone involved in helping me during my medical emergency on the evening of January 3rd. Dispatcher was helpful on the phone until the police and EMTs arrived. They took me to the ambulance very carefully and efficiently, even having to take me down a set of outside stairs. I am very grateful to Peter, Matt, and Ashley for being so professional and kind. Thanks again. We are extremely lucky in Brookfield to have such a wonderful EMS service. And that's from Sarah Heller. From Sarah Heller. Um, and her husband also ex expressed um, similar sentiments about, um, you know, how. Peter, Ashley, and Matt, as well as Officer Perino of the Brookfield PD, came over and did their work in the most efficient and courteous and professional manner, uh, as I had expected they would. They, the ambulance squad and PD, are truly an asset to the town, and I would appreciate if you could communicate that to them. And also, please keep their great service in mind when it comes to budget time. <laughs> That's from, from uh, Rudy Heller, who's a former select, selectman, so he knows how those things work. Great. So there you go. Um, so we also have a, a letter from January 13th, 2022, uh, Chief of Police Michael Blanchard. I'm writing to let you know that an outstanding officer, Justin, Duf what an outstanding officer Justin Default is. He came to our home in Nantomco Park last Friday when we thought my social security information was scan scammed on a website I had gone to. He entered our home and was so kind and compassionate and solved our problem to find out that I was okay and the website was not a scam. We were thrilled. We had a snowstorm and our driveway had not been shoveled and my trash sat in the back hall. He took out our trash and shoveled our driveway before we left. What a guy, so kind and caring. He's truly an asset to your department. I was, I was just like so <laughs> impressed with the community policing yeah. that was done right there because yeah. he took out their trash and shoveled their driveway. I mean, that was well above and beyond what he was called there to do. And I was just really impressed with this yeah. officer. Yeah. And I had the pleasure of meeting him. He's an extremely nice uh, professional, nice, nice officer. Yeah. So, and uh, that's from Ursula and Roy Kucher. Um, and then Sunday evening help from Officer Pinero sent by Donald Narlene uh, Yanovkian. Um, yes, I want the messages. And then the down at the bottom, we've got Dear Chief, I'm a resident in Anatompa and went to school with your dad. We want to compliment <laughs> off Officer uh, Pinero on his handling and helping of my wife with a fake Facebook page set up in her name that also included resident Bernie Coble. Bernie contacted us to discuss a request he received from Arlene via Facebook. And after listening to him, we told him it must be a scam as Arlene made no such request. Bernie said he was gonna call the police as they helped him this past summer when his email was hacked. Officer Panero called us from Bernie's house and walked my wife through the entire process to delete the fake Facebook page. As far as we're concerned, being from Worcester, we both said at the same time, could you imagine if we were in a big city and this happened? You and your team uh, of officers are doing a fantastic job here in Brookfield. And two weeks ago, I called 911. The officer who was the first responder calmed me down until the ambulance arrived. Thanks for developing a fantastic team of officers and protecting our town. Sincerely, Don and Arlene, uh, you know,
And then we got another, didn't we get a call, Karen, um, about Ryan as well? Yes, I got a phone call from uh, former selectman Steve Comtois, who said that he happened to be out plowing. I sent just, yeah, I sent the email to, to Kelly. Um, he happened to be out plowing in the middle of the night, around midnight or so, and saw our plow plowers working diligently, and he just wanted to say that he was very impressed. So. Yeah. Oh, trust me, I, I, I know they're working diligently. Oh, yeah, they, yeah they, they really are. And, and unfortunately, there's a lot more snow than there are people to remove it. So yes. I, I would ask that people please be patient with any cleanup that, that may or may not have been completed to date because we have a really tiny uh, highway department and they're doing a tremendous amount of work with the, the small crew that they have. Yeah. Now, old business, um, we've got the Brookfield Town Administrator return to work policy. This is actually the one that the, the new one that the um, Board of Health adopted. Okay. I just happened to type it on letterhead, but that was not my intention. Okay. Um, so, and fundamentally it says that the town will follow the current CDC guidelines, read them thoroughly to determine work-related attendance and in each circumstance enumerated by the CDC. Um, now the only challenge with that is that it is pretty complicated for the average person to read through those guidelines. They actually, so the link that I put in there is a link to a very, it's a bulleted page. If this, then that, if okay. this, then that, if this, then that. And it addresses whether you're vaccinated, whether you've had COVID, whether you're unvaccinated, whether you're vaccinated and boosted, if okay. you have symptoms, if you don't have symptoms, how long you've been exposed, what type of exposure, and it's bulleted. So it's very, very user-friendly. Right, right. Okay. Yeah, and, and I can say, Beth, that I actually used this link uh, because I came in contact with an individual who tested positive. Gotcha. So I had to go through this link and went through the testing, followed the guidelines and everything. So. The, it, the URL, it just brought you right to. Okay. Like what Kelly said, right, right to your bulleted list. Okay. I had the same concern too, so I, I tested the, I tested it out on myself. <laughs> well, there you go. <laughs> well done. So, well, because I had looked at the 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 old one that was referenced, the the initial. Yep. Thing that they had, and that was it was yeah, like that was, your taxes. Yeah, so. it was very yeah. convoluted. Um, so. And when they when they updated the change and changed the criteria of how long you need to stay inside or not stay inside, depending on your circumstances, um, they created the bullet page, and that's why I, I, I put the link in because I want it to be easy for people. That way, when it's updated there, just follow the link and you get the new information right okay. as soon as possible. And do you want to vote on this? Yeah, so we can vote on that. I thought we had originally had, did we change the agenda again and we, we don't have the mask? Um, it is, it's on the, bottom. on the bottom. It's at the very bottom. Ah, oh, mask mandate discussion. Policy okay. review, which is this policy, and then the mask mandate. Okay. So can I get a motion to accept this, uh, the return to work policy relative to COVID-19? I would like a motion to accept the uh, return to work policy um, regarding uh, the COVID-19. Okay, I'll second it. All in favor? Charlotte or aye. Coughlin, aye. Okay, so let's talk about masking and access to the town hall. So Adam, I, um, I want to solicit any thoughts that you have right now. Um, not having been in the town hall since this was instituted because of multiple close contacts, uh, you know, um, I don't, I don't know how it's been handled or, or how the uh, employees in the town have liked or disliked or whatnot um, the process. Uh, but I have heard general discussion that individuals who have come into town hall have not minded you know, the, the sign in or, or anything like that and wearing a mask. Um, but, but for me, it, it's all about the, the comfort and the, the uh, the work environment for, for those who are working in the building. In terms of them feeling safe or in terms of them yes. not having to, yeah. to, to mask up because they find it, it uncomfortable to wear them? In terms of them feeling safe, 
like uh, they're not comfortable like masks are not comfortable i think we could all agree that you know wearing them for multiple hours even you know an hour is uh not the most comfortable experience um but it, it's them feeling safe at, at their place of business at their place of work yeah. and that's you know th- i think that's the key right um like so I, I know in the my employer there they have a policy where if you are not vaccinated uh, according to the CDC so whatever the CDC guidelines are for whether it's two or one or three or whatever combination um, you don't need to wear a mask but you need to present proof so in our case it would be proof to the town administrator that you are up to date according to the CDC and you don't need to wear a mask um, and then they take the, the policy of if you don't want to report that because you, you don't feel comfortable or you just want to keep that private um, or you are not, you wear a mask. Like that's what they've instituted, but I know that's a private business, not a public yeah. uh, it, setting like ours. So it, it it's, it's still that weird kind of sticky situation. And I know that in, uh, where was I, in Worcester, like, all buildings now you have to wear a mask it doesn't matter whether it's a uh, a town building a municipal building or a private business yeah it's just an indoor it's, it's an mask. indoor mount mask mandate indoor yeah yep. it's the same in milbury um where they require that indoor you have to be masked and so right. i mean everybody's doing it differently around us so it's really hard to get like a, a feel for it um i know brookfield's cases they have dropped but they're still relatively high yeah. compared to other towns of our size okay um, yeah because I, I, I hadn't I, I didn't get a chance to, I didn't get a chance to look at the statistics so but I, I just my yeah. feeling right now is that we're, we're still not quite done with this last wave yes. so so if you yeah. oh, yeah, go ahead no, no, I'm, I'm all set. all right um, pull up the stats yeah Give me one second here. Yep. No, thank you. I do not want to take your survey, but thank you for asking me. I appreciate the uh, consideration. <laughs> Dashboard. data. So all of the gray areas, I'm sorry you can't see this Adam. Um, I don't think it stuck when you hit the city and town data. There, there you go. go. All, the entire state was blue two weeks ago. Okay. Um, now as you can see, when you were talking about this earlier actually the wave is, is the gray areas are not considered like alert areas. Yep. So we're still technically in a. We are, and again, they're they're basing. So when you guys initially discussed this, you were discussing it based on following what the count was. Um, so this is Brookfield, and you can see the recent positivity rate for Brookfield is 24 uh, percent. However, that's 24 percent of 368 people. So 88 people out of 368 tested positive. Right. But so, like you said, that's probably that's, under reporting yeah, because of, because it doesn't include the folks that are doing at home tests that aren't reporting it through whatever apps. Right. And what so, happens, so, so if this is what you're going by, then, you know, this is the information. That's, yeah. that's the only reason I brought up. And then if you look at this map, which then raises it to if, if we had a hundred thousand people at the number of people that were actually tested, that would mean we'd have a test rate of 9,977 every two weeks, and our test rate under those circumstances would be we'd be around 10%. Yeah. Okay. 10% so, is still considered relatively high. Yeah, based on, um, based on the way they were extrapolating the data. Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah. And this covers from 1.9 to 1.22. Right. 
which the reporting date is 127, but so obviously it's, a, it's, a it's gonna it's lag. A, it's a trailing indicator, yeah, right? it's gonna lag, but you can see, or well, you can't see, because I don't have the, the map from the other day, because I check the map every day. Right. And I've watched it go gray from blue to gray, but you know, you look here at Mount Washington, and they've got 42%, right, but, it's but they've, they've only tested test. seven people. Right, but we're, we're not. There's 300, category. well, here's here's um, Holly, which is at 33%. They tested nine people, but they only have a population of 369 people, so that's a big deal. That's, that's a, actually a big deal for that's them. That's actually a big deal for them. Yeah. yeah. You know, in Gosnell down here, not that you care about Gosnell, um, but they have 100%. They tested four people. And they all had COVID. Gosnell only has 75 people living on that island. <laughs> That's a huge percent. Right. You know, so yeah. it's, it's hard to tell based on, on yeah. what it is. But if these so, are the numbers you're going with, then we're running around 10%. Yeah. So. Yeah. And, and, and uh, I can tell you, like, my employer right now, um, they are still mask mandating. Everybody who comes on site has to wear a mask. Um, and, and they're really being no, very, very no nonsense about it. So, my thought is we probably I think we extend this a month and see where we're at. Let's take it to the first yeah. of March and, and see where we're at in terms of our statistics and what's what's in the community and what the what the practices are that people are recommending at that point because that'll give us enough time to see. Is there some other flavor that's going to start burning its way through Boston and whether we need to stay masked or whether we can go ahead and, and come up yep. for air? That's a good way to put yeah. that. <laughs> um, so if we see a drastic drop, would you reconsider? Because I'm yeah. sure people are going to ask me. Uh, yeah. And, and, and there are going to be people who are going to say, you guys need to stay masked forever, so we need to right. balance this. Right. So, well, that's why I'm thinking, let's, let's, put the, let's put the mask mandate for inside town buildings out 30 days. If the numbers do drop radically by the next meeting, uh, uh, certainly we can always curtail it, but that way we're not, we're not having the talk at every single meeting. Right. Right. Mm -hmm. So I, I can we can we do it out for twenty eight days instead? So it is March first because it's not leap year and it's February. Sure. <laughs> okay. <laughs> From February first to March first. Okay. Yeah. And it's the same exact mandate that we have. We're just going to extend it. Yep. Yep. So so mask up. You know, mask up when you're in the town hall and people should be signing at point of use. Yep. So that if somebody so, does wind up positive, we can contact. One folks. of the things that um, came up is who's keeping track of all of these lists, and if somebody pops positive, who reaches out to the people who signed in as Donald Duck and gave a wrong phone number, because um, nobody's checking them when they. Some people are, but some people aren't. So, so, so I have no problem collecting them and keeping them for two weeks and then destroying them because there's no reason to keep this information once we're past that two week period Absolutely. where nobody's been sick. Yep. So that would be like what I would like to do with the list. Certainly. Okay. Sounds like a plan. You good with that, Adam? Yep, yep, I'm good with that. Okay. But the uh, lists, um, uh, I'm guessing, you know, people signed in and whatnot after the two weeks, it, it would just be so know, we, destroyed we, per usual. Yeah, we do need to modify the list so there's either a date column there or, or whoever is the department head actually puts the date in well the list that i've line. seen there's there's date columns on the list that people okay. use and we didn't give them a form to use okay um, well we, we write at the top we just write it, it's the same form and then we just write the date every day we change it okay some people do some people don't keep the same one in yeah well, i know when i came in a couple of days running our sheet hadn't changed over and it didn't have right. a date no, at the top. no one i'm going to so. tell you that i got i asked people to sign in and like um Mr. Pella asked him to sign in. He didn't, so so if know. they don't sign in, then sign in for them. Okay, all right. Like if you know who the person is that you're talking to, just put their name okay. down on the time. I, I'm almost at the point where we say don't have people sign in, but the person yeah. the yeah. person is responsible for keeping track of who they give service to. 
Okay. okay. We can't control the right down residents. Yeah. So let's include that in the policy <laughs> that, that whoever's providing the service is right who you're get given the service to and their time in and their time out. Because but we need so the whole purpose behind this is so that if somebody gets sick, we can contact them and say, Hey, you were exposed potentially right. exposed to somebody who tested positive for COVID. Right. We can't do that without their phone number. Right. Mm -hmm. So whoever's responsible for writing this down is gonna to have to ask somebody their phone number or for a preferred means of communication. Yep. We can call you, we can email you. I mean, if they, if they refuse, they refuse. Mm -hmm. um, we do have, I mean, most people are, don't have, so most people don't answer their home phone numbers, but a lot of people still have them and you mm -hmm. can look them up on the internet. So the worst case scenario is we can look up whatever publicly available phone number that there is on them and we leave them a message that they never check, but at least we've done, made every reasonable effort. We'll do effort what we can. Okay, them. that works. Yeah, you can only it, do what it, you can every do. reasonable effort, but not like, yeah. we don't need to go locating people. And if someone really doesn't want to give their phone number or whatnot, mm -hmm. well, they're making that conscious decision yep. to not. Okay, you know. because you had a no sign in, no service as part of this policy. Yeah. So are you are you going to relax that a little bit? Well, clearly people because haven't been following it. So either, I don't know. Either we're going to um, enforce it or we need to figure out a better way. Because really the purpose is the contract. So the, the, the purpose is the contact tracing. Right. It's just so that we can let people know when they're, when right. they're exposed. So if we're not asking people to sign in when they come in. Right. We're asking them to sign in. At, now, I know that um, the assessor's been doing it very diligently, but I haven't checked the other offices yeah. uh, to see if they're, if they're following yeah. up on it because they're the ones who are being exposed to the public. Right. So uh, I, can, I can follow up with them. I shouldn't assume, but I did assume that everybody was doing what was asked. Yep. I have no reason to think they wouldn't. Uh, but I, I haven't seen any of the lists and I wasn't, somebody actually brought me one and said, hey, what do I do with this? And I said, give it to me. And that's what made me think that I yeah. should probably yep. ask everybody to provide me with their lists. So. so. Okay. So it sounds like, it, Adam, can I get a motion to extend our, our in, inside mask mandate through uh, for the next 28 days. <laughs> yep, I'll make a motion to extend the inside uh, mask mandate for municipal buildings for the next 28 days. You know, I'll second it. I just want to propose an amendment that in the event that we don't reconvene on it, that it'll stay in place until the next available date there thereafter for that us to make save. a determination. That will save some time. So would you second that amendment for me? Yep, I will second, I will second that amendment. All right, so all in favor? Uh, Jolly or aye. Coughlin aye. And that is the end that of your is agenda. That. So can I get a motion to adjourn? Yep, I'll make a motion to adjourn at, uh, according to my time, 7.55 p.m. All right, I'll second that. All in favor? Dollar cry. Half an eye. Yay, that's a wrap.